Now, I'm not into interior design hard and fast rules. Never start without a mood board. I love Pinterest. Paint on the walls, keep it simple. What will make the biggest impact? Buying new or buying vintage? Bigger is better. Hello, I'm Laura Jackson and I am the creative director of Glassette. These are the interior questions that you wanted the answers to. Today, we are talking about decorating. How do you decide on a colour scheme for a room? Choosing a colour scheme for a room can actually feel quite overwhelming and I did a bit of research on this and I came across this amazing blog called The Spruce. Now, I'm not into interior design hard and fast rule, however, they came up with a 60-30-10 rule that actually I think could be applied to a lot of people's decorating decisions. So 60 would be the prominent colour in the room, 30 would be a secondary colour and 10 would be an accent colour. Now, you can kind of play around with this a little bit, but I do think having a clear scheme where you have got one leading colour is quite important. And you need to think about what room, so is it a hallway or a living room or a bedroom and then look at the proportions of that room. Is it a small space? Is it a large space? Is it a light space? Is it a dark space? And then think about how you want that room to feel. So if it's a little kitchen and it's not got loads of light in there, you might want to have a really light bright colour scheme to give it a bit of a lift and make it feel bigger. Or if you've got kind of a cosy little living room snug and you want it to be kind of more of a reading room, then maybe those darker tones. Also think about what colours you love and what colours that you're drawn to. Just because one person likes a dark, cosy, snuggy living room doesn't mean that you're going to like the same. It's like, how do you want that room to make you feel? I made some massive mistakes when I moved into my house and I kind of went really colourful because I thought that that's what I I liked in terms of, oh, it gave me a, a real lift, it gives me a real boost. But actually, those kind of quite contrasty, stark, fun colours were incredibly jarring to pair with the furniture that I already had. So I think if I'd started again, I would have looked at the furniture that was already existing in the house and how I could use that to work with a colour scheme because there's no point in painting a room and then having to buy new furniture. So there's lots of things to take into consideration, but never start without a mood board or an online pin board. I think there are so many colours out there, there's so many options, there's so many ideas, and sometimes you kind of get overruled with other people's ideas and it's hard to know what you like. But I think once you've got everything on a board or everything kind of on a Pinterest board, which I, I love Pinterest, it makes it a little bit easier. And then you can get some samples in, so paint samples, fabric samples, maybe even some different types of wood. Lay it all out and look at it together in real life. Does this go with this? Can you put it next to your sofa that you've already got? Does that kind of colour work? I think seeing it in real life will give you more of a, an idea of, of texture and feeling than if it's online because colours and kind of pigmentation can get quite distorted. Paint on the walls. So there's some amazing paint companies out there at the moment where you can get big stick on paint samples and put it on the wall and move it around. How does the paint work in that room depending on what time of day it is? Because the light will look incredibly different in the morning than it does in the evening. So move it around and just don't make any rash decisions. Don't be like, I've got to get this paint right now and I need to do it on Monday. Sit with it for a couple of weeks and figure out if you really like it. But remember that taste is subjective and what's the most important thing is to go with something that you like, you love and brings you joy. I get asked all the time if people need an interior designer and I think if you have the budget because you're doing a very large project and you can afford to have an interior designer, I think it's a route that's definitely worth investigating. They will help you with the functionalities, the practicalities as well as the aesthetic decisions that you need to make. But if you don't have the budget, which most of us don't, I didn't, then we have to be our own interior designer, which can be quite stressful but also very fun. And along the way, I've kind of learned some top tips in terms of being your own interior designer. One is making sure you've got lots of references and then looking at your references and figuring out why you like the room or the space that you've kind of, you've torn out of a magazine. Is it the curtains? Is it the layout? Is it the color scheme? Really getting to kind of asking those granular questions, the whys 
to really establish your own interior design style. We never want to replicate anybody else. I think it's about how we can be inspired by other people and turn that into our own idea. And I think that's really fun. You need to think about time frame when it comes to ordering tiles and things like that. So you do want to give yourself as much of a run up as possible so that you're not missing those deadlines that your builders so desperately need you to stick to. One thing that I really like is Google Images as well. So I will screenshot the item that I like and I'll put it into Google Images and I'll find something similar. I love looking on auction sites and on places like Silenci and Vinteria eBay, Gumtree, Etsy. And I think what an interior designer will try and get you to do if you can afford one is get your personality into that room by creating layers if that's what you need to do. Picking up pieces when you're on your travels, shopping the high street, shopping vintage, and just creating a space that really feels yours. But don't be hard on yourself. A house is an evolution and it's constantly changing. We see these before and after homes online and that's not the reality, but that's okay because it's nice to grow with your house and grow into your house. The key decorating elements that will elevate a room are the big things. So if you are working to a budget, think about what will make the biggest impact in your room. That will be a rug. So you could ch drastically change the feeling and the color scheme of a whole room with a rug. Think about the curtains, think about using a pot of paint to accent some features in the room. So whether that's the inside of a window or the picture rail or the skirting board, pulling out those kind of key elements. Maybe you're using a darker contrasting color or a complementary color that can really change the whole feeling of a room. And that's just using a pot of paint. Hanging things on the wall will make a really big difference as well, whether that's art, prints, or a wall hanging. You can really pull out a wall and create a feature with just those simple ideas. Curtains can be really inexpensive or really expensive. I think you need to think about what budget you've got. If you're going down the bespoke road, use somebody local and they'll come over to your house and they'll really help you. They will measure the windows, they will talk you through all of the options. I mean, it is quite overwhelming the different types of pleats and lengths and linings that you can get, but having an expert come to your house, sit down, talk through all of the options with you, that is brilliant, but it's an expensive service and you pay for what you get. If you're buying off the shelf, there are some amazing places that you can go. I'm a huge fan of Caravan, which is a, a French online interior store. They have amazing curtains. H&M, Zara, La Redoute. Think about what the curtains are going to be used for and where they're going to be used. So for instance, if you're putting them in a bedroom, you might want to have blackout curtains. If you're putting them downstairs in a room that's quite dark, you want to make sure that the material is quite transparent so you get lots of light. When you're buying high street curtains, which are brilliant, one way to elevate them on an extra level is by the curtain pole. So I would always invest in a really good, sturdy curtain pole. Go simple, black metal. Jim Lawrence is my absolute favorite, but I think it takes your high street curtains and just really elevates them into something that looks expensive and chic. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Knowing how big or small to go with your rug and what kind of style to go for. But I remember Sophie Ashby, the amazing interior designer, telling me to go for a really big rug if you can. I think having this extra large rug really elevates the room. So it gives it a wow factor as soon as you walk in. I mean, if you can't have carpets, there's a really great way of adding that kind of comfort under the foot. It adds a kind of a coziness, it adds texture to a room. So if you can, bigger is better. Usually that's a bespoke option, but if it's not, there are some amazing places on the high street to get rugs from. I think it's worth thinking about what kind of texture you want to create in that room. So you're going to go for something that's Moroccan and shaggy, or you're going to go for a dew and a seagrass, or you're going to go for more of a kind of a flat weave in a stripe or a geometric print. You need to kind of think about what kind of style of rug that you want to go for. A rug's a really great way of adding extra personality to your room, but if there's already lots going on, I would say keep it simple. So a stripe, a checkerboard, or just kind of a, a simple one color flat weave would probably be your best option. But if you're concerned and you don't know really what option to choose, mood board, take a picture of how your room already looks and the rug that you want to get and create a kind of mood board on a Figma or a Keynotes or something like that. As the same with all of your interiors, you 
can go down two routes, buying new or buying vintage. If you're buying vintage, all of the usual places to buy vintage are amazing for rugs and we sell some incredible vintage rugs on Glassette from Moussem and El Loom, which I love. Or you can go down the High Street route, which is a newer rug. And for that kind of thing, I love Weaver Green, Nordic Knots, Soho Home, Lara Doot. Alternative Flooring do amazing rugs as well that are made to order and not super expensive. But here are all the places I suggest that I like.